God morning, everyone. It is time to go deeper into Matthew chapter 10. Reading the surface was tough enough. Going deeper is deep, is deep. And hey, another mention on that algorithm. It gives me the ages and it gives me in groupings of like six or eight years. And I just love the fact that I see uh, it's about equal. The ages are about equal. Uh, the 18 to 24 year olds watching. Um, I'm just, I'm honored. I'm honored and I'm grateful that you're watching. Pray you're listening and learning so that you can learn this as a young one and not be an old man trying to perfect it. Ah, many years wasted. Lord God Almighty, we thank you as we go deeper. This is your word and this chapter is one of the strongest chapters where you speak so sternly about who a follower is and what they're expected to do, and what is expected of them. And that's a great task. But Lord, this is where you say, take up your cross and follow me. The cross was not easy for you, and our cross will not be easy for us. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Jesus said this, as you enter the home, enter home, you go into the villages, go into the towns and preach. The kingdom of heaven is near, right? Repent. As you enter a home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, then let your peace return. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. You know, again, I know people that go to people's houses for Christmas and Thanksgiving, and they could talk about football, they could talk about makeup, they could talk about whatever, stocks, YouTube, bring up Jesus, don't want to hear it. You, you don't have to walk into someone's home and scream, you filthy sinners, you're all going to rot in hell. I'd kick you out too. Jesus would kick you out, okay? But you should be able to share the gospel. Because it's a gospel of peace. It's a gospel of love. But remember, in this peace, we're bearing our cross. Okay? Peter says that, 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 first of all, set apart Christ as Lord of your life and always be prepared to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and compassion so that they can see that it's from the heart of God. So when you're doing that, I don't know, I'd shake the dust off my feet. I want to say this. I went to a church, and two of the people in the praise and worship band, uh, they were men that, I don't know that that matters, but, well, it kind of does, because we were on a men's retreat. And they were talking about it, and, and they, they played in a band in bars. And that's neither here nor there. It's not for this subject. They played, the, and they said, they were talking, and then one of them said, we played together for two years before we even knew each other was a Christian. How in the world do you do that? How in the world do you do what brings you so much joy, playing an instrument together, and Christ is never brought up in two years? God has not called us to keep Jesus a secret. Okay? If you believe in heaven and hell, then I'd be shouting it from the rooftops. He told us to. Okay. Um, he, Jesus says again, um, you know, when he's warning about future events, about future persecution, which that future belongs to us, it belonged to the apostles too, because all the apostles died from persecution, except John. John was persecuted and put in prison, but all the rest were killed. Okay. But so he, he says, uh, don't worry about it. The words will be given to you. It won't be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. He says, brother will betray brother to death and father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. That is our future. You will be hated by everyone because of me. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. I can tell you this again, you know, I always talk about Jesus. I don't care where I'm at. I don't, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Put me in a bar. I'm going to talk about Jesus. It doesn't matter. 
I know people that call themselves Christians and date unbelievers and never mention Jesus. Or they say, I believe in Jesus. The person you're dating is going to burn in hell if you don't do something about it. How are you not mentioning Jesus? Just makes me wonder how much a person believes. But he says, you'll be hated by everyone. But we don't bring up Jesus because we don't want to offend anybody. So you're never going to be hated if you don't bring him up. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. All right. Then he says, whoever acknowledges me, all right, whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Now, I know that not everybody has a voice and they're not bold and they just can't scream Jesus. But Peter, again, Peter said, first apart, set, a Christ, set apart Lord. First of all, set apart Jesus as Lord of your life. Always be prepared to give a reason for the hope that you have, okay? So I know people like to post, you know, I just want you to know that I follow Jesus. I believe in Jesus. That's all fine and good. What are you going to do if your father-in-law tells you you can't pray at the meal? Don't bring up Jesus at the meal. Are you going to disown him? Are you going to keep the peace? Don't know. He says, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace. Everybody says Jesus says love everybody. He does. But he says, preach the gospel. I came and died so that people can be saved. Why are you out there giving a homeless person a sandwich but not giving them the gospel? Why are you out there shoveling your neighbor's snow to be like Jesus and a lover of Jesus and be kind and not tell them the gospel in 10 years but always shovel their snow? I don't get it. Do not suppose I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to put a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be members of his own household. And remember, anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Watch. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. And if anyone, this is verse 42, and if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, he's talking about his disciples, truly, I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. Now, I prayed before this, before I even turned on the video, I said, Lord, these are sharp words. But when they come from a human, they're sharp and, and they seem judgmental and condescending. And I said, Lord, please, please give me compassion. Give me compassion in this. How do you read them words and not say, he didn't come to bring peace. Preach the gospel. The people around you are dying. They're dying. They need the gospel. Um, uh, I, Again, shovel your neighbor's snow. But if you shovel your neighbor's snow in the name of Jesus and don't give them the gospel, don't shovel their snow because that's not the love of God. And give a homeless person a sandwich. Jesus says, do it. But if all you're going to do is give a homeless person a sandwich and not give them the gospel of Jesus Christ, keep the sandwich or send it to me. I'll be hungry. Because what you're not doing is sharing the love of God. If someone is sick and you have medicine that can cure their illness, and this illness being sin and death going to hell, I don't understand how you can have the medicine in your pocket but bring them a meal every day, prolonging their agony but never giving them the medicine. Preach the gospel in season and out of season. We are clearly called to do that. And Jesus said, take up your cross a cross is not easy to bear. If you are taking up your cross of Jesus and you're living your life like everything's fine and, 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 it's, and it's pretty easy, life is hard. Life and, and Jesus are two different things, okay? 
Life is life. We get in car accidents. We lose our job. We take demotions. We, we get our identity stolen. That happens. Jesus is talking about preaching the gospel. Jesus is talking about giving up sin, carrying that cross. Think about your cross. Lord God Almighty, we bless you and praise you. What a tough calling. What tough words they are. Tough for all of us, Lord. Tough for all of us. Bear with us with your mercy and your compassion and your kindness. And, and most of all, Lord, we need your mercy and patience. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. And you make a fantastic day, everyone.